All right, welcome back to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Coverage. Walsh along with Chris Muller for tonight's show. We're going to go out to the Borders and Borders Hotline right now. We got Matt out in Butler. How you doing, Matt? Hey, good evening, guys. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for calling. Hey, good. Quick question for you. So the over and under from from the bookies is eight and a half. Why, given all of this talent, was it the cornerback position that was the weakness that big of a weakness? That that's. The no, they don't buy the quarterback. The yeah, I think I think right, everyone's still skeptical of Kenny Pickett. Yeah, nationally they don't buy the quarterback, and remember that line is designed to get action. So they think they'll be either eight and nine or nine and eight. But if Pickett is better than the Vegas insiders think he is going to be, uh, and that is something that happens. Like remember the uh, St. Louis Rams when they won the Super Bowl, for example, I think were like the second longest shot in the entire league to do it. So they don't get it right all the time. Uh, they get it right enough to build big casinos, Richie, but they don't believe in the quarterback. If the quarterback ends up being closer to what he, he showed in the preseason, then that over is going to be an easy win for people. Would you be more surprised if the Steelers are, say, 7-10 and 10 or, uh, like, say, 11-6? and six? Uh, I'm actually, this, this is going to shock people who think I'm the biggest pessimist ever and a Steelers hater. I will be more surprised if they go 7-10 and 10 than 11-6. and six. Uh, they were 9-8 and eight last year. I expect them to be better this year. Uh, I would say it's less surprising that they're two games better than two games worse. Yeah, barring any injuries. All right, back out to the phone lines. Let's go out to Scott. How you doing, Scott? Hi, guys. Thanks for taking my call tonight. I would like to talk about the parent company of the Pittsburgh Penguins taking over AT&T Sports at Pittsburgh. Now, as happy as I am that the Fenway Sports Group is saving the channel, there are some concerns I have regarding the Pirates' television rights and what might happen with them. I'm hoping that the Pirates stay on the channel, but since Fenway Sports also owns the Boston Red Sox franchise, as we all know, I don't know if that would sit well with the Pirates and their ownership group. And furthermore, if the Pirates decide to partner with Major League Baseball to air their games like they did with the Padres and Diamondbacks franchises, you have to wonder what would happen with the pre- and post-game show crew, such as Ali Cohen, who only does the Pirates pre- and post-game shows, and Michael McHenry, the analyst, as well as whoever is involved with those broadcasts. I think the best option for the Pirates, should they choose to find another broadcast partner, would be to partner up with you guys at CBS, because I'm sure you would have room to air the pre- and post-game shows, but if MLB takes over the broadcast, they probably wouldn't have any pre- and post-game shows since the Padres and D-backs no longer have those types of programs. So I'm happy that the channel is being saved, but I'm very concerned about what might happen with the Pirates broadcasts going forward. Well, I mean, Chris, I mean, all signs are pointing to Major League Baseball taking over. Now, I don't know if that's a mo uh, model that a lot of fans might like because the, the caller pointed out the pre and post games, they would be shortened and it looks like they're going to use the play by play and the um, color guys to potentially do that and maybe one interview so you won't get interviews in the clubhouse. Now, I, I, I hope maybe they find their way on this channel. I, it obviously wouldn't work out on CBS, but uh, potentially here if they can't find a landing spot. But I do think, Chris, that uh, the Pirates and the Penguins, I mean, the Penguins are going to have Nesson, um, but I think the Pirates and the Penguins need some uh, broadcast exposure, meaning like a station like this. If the Pirates are going to be streaming only or Major League Baseball is going to take it over or potentially have a channel there, that they'll just call it Pirates and they'll just air Pirates games. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if that'll sit well with fans. It might not sit well with fans, and if MLB takes over, I think they only end up paying the Pirates 80% of the value of their broadcast deal. How about this, Richie? I'll find myself a banana yellow jacket or a gold <laughs> jacket or some black T-shirts. You get the reverse, and maybe we run a little Pirates post-game and pre-game show here, huh? How yeah, about that, we could Richie? Do that. Bucko Fever. Uh, Bucko Fever, it. 162 nights a year. We could do it right here on the sports call. Um, yeah, I, I just, I, I don't know what's going to happen and how this is going to unfold, but I can tell you something. I don't think a city like Pittsburgh is ready to spend, um, what, $30 a month to get both teams if, if that's what's going to happen eventually with streaming. I don't, I don't know if you have enough Pirates fans to support that here. I mean, you have a ton of Pirates fans, don't get me wrong, but they got to win, first of all. Um, there's got to be some optimism, but I, I think you're going to lose a lot of fans, like my wife and my mom and people, outliers like that, will watch it on TV, but they're not paying the $30 a month or whatever it's going to cost to watch Pirates games. 
I mean, I think the Penguins would have to exist as a standalone in that kind of setting uh, because I think people would be a lot more willing to pay that money even with fewer games. How about in three years when Sidney Crosby isn't Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin isn't who he is and, and this team is going to be at the bottom of the NHL? Do you think they're going to get the money story. then? Well, that's a different story, and I think the Penguins are going to try to stave off anything like that happening for as long as humanly possible, but you're right. I mean, that... That wave might be coming here in three years, no matter how hard they try to avoid it. And I think in, in, in house there, excuse me, uh, they have an inkling as to how ugly that's going to be, and they just don't want to think about it till it gets here. Yeah, that's probably the right move. Let's go out to Dave in North Huntington. How you doing, Dave? Well, how are you gentlemen doing tonight? Good, thanks for calling. Good. Hey, uh, Bettner gave up a triple again tonight. Our closer, Dave Bettner. Yeah. And I just want to know if you gentlemen ever noticed this guy never goes one, two, three. Very seldom does he go one, two, three. I mean, That's he is an all-star, and he throws hard. He was one and, of the best pitchers yeah. in all of baseball, regardless of role, for the majority of the season and still is. Like, that seems like a nitpick that doesn't also even seem true. Early in the season, he was mowing down teams. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's one guy that the Pirates have to build around. I, I know that we'll be talking about this again next year. He's a guy that you can get a lot for, and if the Pirates aren't competitive... I mean, why do you need a closer? I mean, honestly, I mean, that's the one position that they really don't need right now. They're not in any kind of race. So why uh, build around him? Well, I mean, he's a guy that you're going to hope that's going to be here when the Pirates are good in maybe tomorrow or next year. I mean, not tomorrow, maybe next year or the year after. I'm just saying he doesn't have a lot of value to them if they're not good again next year. And I would think about trading him if they are near the bottom of the barrel again. I don't know if you wait around for a competitive team that might never get here. I think if they're in the bottom of the barrel next year, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be fired over at the Pirates. Probably should be in that case. All right. Well, we get to take a break. Back with more of your phone calls coming up next. Stay right there.